Let's take a look at Boeing's entry into the Joint Strike Fighter competition, the X-32. One of the more interesting looking X-planes, the X-32 is a concept demonstrator built by Boeing and given the in-house nickname Monica, and competed for what at the time was called the largest military contract in history, the Joint Strike Fighter or JSF. The X-32 was a single-engine delta-wing stealth multi-role fighter that would have been produced in three variants, an Air Force version, a carrier-based naval version, and a short takeoff and vertical landing or Stolvol version. Let's take a look at some specifications for the X-32. Length 45 feet 0.1 inches or 13.72 meters. Height 17 feet 3.8 inches or 5.28 meters. Wingspan 36 feet or 10.97 meters. Wing area 590 square feet or 54.8 meters squared. Maximum speed 1000 knots or Mach 1.6 at altitude. Empty weight 24,030 pounds or 10,900 kilograms. Maximum takeoff weight, 38,000 pounds or 17,200 kilograms. Range, for the Stolvol version, 600 nautical miles or 1,112 kilometers. For the Naval or CV version, 750 nautical miles or 1,389 kilometers. For the Air Force version, 850 nautical miles or 1,574 kilometers. Engines. One Pratt & Whitney YF119 PW614 afterburning turbofan, producing 28,000 pounds or 120 kilonewtons thrust dry, or 43,000 pounds or 190 kilonewtons with afterburner. The X-32 was going to be armed with either the 20mm M61A2 Vulcan cannon or the Mauser BK27 cannon, and possibly an external gun pod for certain variants. Additionally, the design allowed for combinations of internal stores including 6 AMRAAM air-to-air -air missiles or 2 AMRAAM air-to-air -air missiles and 2 2,000 pound or 900 kilogram class guided bombs. For non-stealthy missions, external stores could be carried up to about 15,000 pounds or 6,800 kilograms of guided weapons, air-to-surface missiles, and even external fuel tanks to extend range. The JSF program was actually a merger of several programs including the Common Affordable Lightweight Fighter and the Supersonic Stolvol Fighter or SSF. Following the end of the Cold War and especially after the overwhelming victory in the Gulf War, defense budgets were greatly reduced to pay what was then called the Peace Dividend. As a result, several major developmental projects were cancelled. These included the Navy's Advanced Fighter Attack, the Air Force's Multi-Role Fighter, the Navy's A-12 Avenger II, which was to be a replacement for the A-6, and the Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, which was to be a replacement of the F-14 Tomcat. This led to the formation of the Joint Advanced Strike Technology, or JAST, program in 1993. By 1995, with the inclusion of Stolval requirements, the program was renamed Joint Strike Fighter, or JSF. The goal of JSF was an ambitious one, replace the Harrier, A-10, F-16, F-A-18, and F-117 with a single family of fighters. To handle such an undertaking, international cooperation was needed from the start. The United Kingdom joined as a founding member of the JSF in 1995 and became a Tier 1 partner. Following a Concept Demonstration Phase, or CDP, Italy and the Netherlands joined as Tier 2 partners, and Canada, Denmark, Norway, Austria, and Turkey joined as Tier 3 partners. In 1997, as part of the concept development phase, Lockheed Martin and Boeing were selected as final competitors. Boeing's concept demonstrator was designated the X-32, while the Lockheed demonstrator was designated the X-35. British Aerospace and Northrop Grumman joined the Lockheed team and the competition was on. Each team was to produce two flying examples, one for conventional takeoff and landing with carrier capabilities, and the other for Stolval. 
The Boeing X-32 design strategy placed great emphasis on cost. As a result, several compromises were made which would ultimately hinder the program. The first was the wing. In order to minimize production manufacturing costs and minimize differences between the different versions of the airplane, a delta wing was chosen. The wing would have a leading edge sweep of 55 degrees, which allowed for a thicker wing that could hold more fuel while still reducing transonic aerodynamic drag. However, eight months into the competition, the JSF payload and maneuverability requirements changed at the request of the Navy and the Delta Wing fell short of the new requirements. To accommodate these new requirements, Boeing engineers updated the design to include a more conventional tail, which also reduced weight and improved agility. However, the changes were made too late to implement on the prototypes. At this point, it was decided that the existing wing design was enough to serve as a technology demonstrator. Ironically, despite being designed to reduce cost, the wing would actually prove a challenge to fabricate. One other interesting note about the wing. The naval version of the X-32 did not have folding wings. However, the Super Hornet's wings are about 44 feet or 13.6 meters extended and about 30.6 feet or 9.32 meters folded placing the X-32's 36 foot or 10.97 meters somewhere in between the two. Another early design decision that centered around lowering production costs was to implement a direct lift thrust vectoring system, similar to the one used in the Harrier. The advantage of direct lift is that minimal additional hardware is required in order to implement. However, a disadvantage is that the engine has to be placed in the center of the aircraft or directly behind the pilot, which results in a forward center of gravity. This was necessary to allow the X-32 to perform a neutral attitude hover. In comparison, the X-35 made use of a system that connected a drive shaft to the turbine which turned a lift fan that essentially operated like a helicopter's main rotor. The X-35's approach was seen as an evolution of previous examples with dedicated engines to provide vertical lift, such as found in aircraft like the Convair Model 200 and the Yakovlev Yak-141. The dedicated engines basically became dead weight in level flight, and by instead using a lift fan, weight was reduced and less maintenance was required. While more complicated than a direct lift system, the X-35's lift fan allowed the engine's placement to remain aft, similar to most conventional fighters. The decision to go with the direct lift system also produced what some feel is the most identifiable feature of the X-32, the large air intake under the nose. While other fighters, such as the A-7 and F-8 made use of a similar intake setup, the X-32s appear to be oversized. The location and size of the air intake was required in order to drive sufficient air into the engine during hover, as ram air pressure could not be used. Aside from the appearance, another detrimental side effect was the possibility of making the compressor blades directly visible to radar. Some strategies to deal with this were proposed, including variable baffles that could block radar signals while not negatively impacting airflow. And finally, the location and size of the intake would cause hot air from the exhaust to circulate back into the engine when near the ground, causing reduced thrust output and potentially overheating the engine. Despite these challenges, the X-32 is soon ready for the competition with the X-35. In September of 2000, the X-32A made its first flight, which was planned to last about 40 minutes, but was cut short due to a minor hydraulic leak which was discovered shortly after takeoff. Despite this setback, about 80% of the planned objectives were achieved and included flight to 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters and attaining a speed of 200 knots or 370 kilometers per hour. Originally scheduled for the third quarter of 2000, the X-32B Stovall made its first flight in March of 2001, using a modified Pratt & Whitney F-119 engine known as the F-119PW614S, the X-32B transitioned from conventional flight to Stovall mode by making use of a butterfly valve which diverted the exhaust gases to thrust vectoring nozzles. And while this provided the X-32B with Stovall capabilities, 
The X35 solution using a lift fan would allow for a greater payload. This, along with the fact that the X32B demonstrator had to have parts removed to enable supersonic flight due to its heavy delta wing, was not helpful to the X32's chances in the competition. And although as mentioned before a conventional tail would have solved some of these problems, the fact that the X35B demonstrator could transition to supersonic flight as is, and was actually built out of the X35A prototype, was another blow to the X32's chances. Flight tests for both the X32 and X35 continued until July of 2001. In October of 2001, the winner of the JSF contract was announced. It was the X35, which would go on to become the F-35 Lightning II. The loss of the contract was a major blow to Boeing, as some estimates had the contracts calling for as many as 5,000 fighters to be produced. Although the X-32 was never produced, it was not a total waste. Boeing viewed the project as a strategic investment and did apply some of its findings to both the F-18 Super Hornet and the MQ-25 Stingray. And as to where the two X-32 prototypes are today, the X-32A is currently located in the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. While the X-32B is at the Patuxent River National Air Museum in Maryland. What do you think? Would the X-32 have been successful if it had implemented its conventional tail? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe and click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to support this channel, consider Patreon or some of the merchandise below. Stay safe and see you next time.